question I'm asking everyone except for Manny. NBA season starts tomorrow. My Who's fans. winning it? Who's winning it? The season. Season? The this season? The finals? Bro. Golden State? Everyone except for Manny, answer this question. Who's winning it this year? Golden State. Lakers. I like that answer. Lakers? Oh, they're, 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 didn't they lose? No, man. Realistically, it should be. Golden State didn't make the playoffs. With Porzingis? It's going to be the Brooklyn. Don't about this season. Don't Did you guys lose paper? the preseason? Calm down until back. All right, man, talk about preseason. Right, the Bucks went 0 6 in the preseason last year and they won the paper. It's got to be a Lakers, but realistically, I don't think it's going to be a Lakers. Tomorrow is the first game back after the transplant. At times, I feel like I get really frustrated with like, oh, I still feel like I have a long way to go. But I also do realize that I'm not even a year post-transplant yet. And this is what it would look like if we start to break the hydrogen bonds. I feel like I have lived a pretty extraordinary life. I feel like I really can do just about anything that I set my mind to. It started off just as like a little cough. It got to the point where the coughs turned into shortness of breath. My pulse was at 200 beats per minute. I'm 16 years old, I'm in good health. I just traveled with Team Canada. A heart problem is like the last thing that it could be. Damn, he did it before you. They eventually realized that I had a sickness of the heart called a dilated cardiomyopathy. It's like a certain type of heart failure. The left ventricle wasn't able to pump the blood as well as it was before. That's when I started realizing that if I want to return to basketball, my only option is probably to have a heart transplant. You wish you could do something for him, or, or if it was easy to take his, you know, his spot, but there is nothing you can do, and you just, you know, it's unbelievable. The day before my surgery, they told me that I may not ever be able to return to basketball. Like in the back of my mind, I'm playing for my parents so that like if I get a Div 1 scholarship, I could like take the burden off of their shoulders for having to pay for my education. And that was something that really bothered me for a while. Like it could be the end of my career. Big universities chasing it. You had a big career ahead of a pro, pro career. Where was that going to go? What was happening now? And no answers. Nobody could figure this thing out. Where was it coming from? I'd have an internal conversation of like, why me? Like, why is this happening to me? I didn't deserve anything that was happening to me and I don't think I did. And it was just so frustrating because there was no reason why and there was no real explanation as to why it would have happened to me. I was just kind of angry with everything. Like I was angry at the doctors for telling me like I was angry. I was just, I was depressed. I was extremely upset. Um, I didn't have much motivation to do much of anything for a while. In the back of my mind, I was just like, oh yeah, like this isn't happening. Because they told me that um, a heart transplant usually happens within like six to 12 months. For someone of my size, it would probably take a lot longer. I think it was four or five months that I was on the transplant list, it event the new heart eventually came. So the last word we told him, we love you, but he couldn't talk. He had a lot of uh, tubes, but he just did the sign and that's it. Okay, so.
It's something that I came to terms with now, but it's still like a pretty sad thought to think about. Someone having to die in order for me to have a heart transplant. Like being able to sign up as an organ donor, it takes a lot of bravery and it's one of the best things that you could do for someone. It's so sad to think about that they had to lose someone in order for me to live, but I do eventually want to be able to reach out to them and just let them know that the person that they lost is appreciated and that uh, I really do uh, extend my condolences to them and their family. From the point coming out of surgery, being in the bed, to the point where you could stand and, you know, one, two, three steps and I was physically tired back in bed, to the point where he could walk, <laughs> to now, you know, it's the step by step by step by step process that he's going through. Part of the reason I'm here, I'm, I'm I'm like super impressed that he's out there on the floor, right? I'm checking him out in warm-ups, he looks great. I can't let what their loved one sacrificed go to waste. And so I have to like, every day that I wake up, I, I'm just like grateful for everything that I have. And I try to make sure that I work as hard as I can because I was blessed with another chance at life and another chance at basketball. So I feel like I have to work twice as hard as I did before just because there's twice as many people now rooting for me and wishing the best for me and my success. We do want to begin in Ontario, where health officials just announced 407 new confirmed cases of COVID-19 today. That is the highest single-day increase since the first week of June. With cases continuing to rise, the Ontario Premier Doug Ford, while well, he has announced strict new measures. Effective this morning, our government is taking immediate action to lower social gathering sizes in every region in Ontario. Hey, I can't use the phone right now. I'll call you back as soon as possible. Hey, Dylan, we're just trying to uh, touch base with you. We uh, heard that you guys got back from zero gravity and, and you guys are in isolation. It'd be good to check in and just talk and see what's happening, what's up with everybody and how you're doing. Hey, I can't use the phone right now. I'll call you back as soon as possible. Hey, Dylan. Uh, sorry, man. We just thought we'd try you again today. Coach? Who are you looking for? Well, no, I think... Dylan? Yeah, like, have you talked to Dylan? No, I haven't talked to him today, no. Let me call Mick and try to find out where everybody is, okay? Okay, cool. I'll call you right back. All, All right. right. I'll call you right back. Okay. Bye. Did you tell him we were calling? There he is. Hi. <laughs> What up? Um, we got a test done on the Friday, and then we played our two games, and then we got the results back on the Sunday, and then that's when we found out one of our teammates had tested positive. Overall, my final year at Ridley was definitely one to remember. I think there was a lot of there was a lot of good, but there was also some moments that weren't the greatest. Like COVID didn't really help us with um, reaching where we wanted to be by the end of the season. As the season progressed, I kind of, the D1 aspirations kind of dwindled. At the beginning of the season, I had been in contact with like one coach like out east, but ultimately he decided on betting on like someone who was already healthy. There's still gonna be people that are a little bit nervous to like bet on me and my abilities. I'd say the biggest stressor is probably, will I get a scholarship? Dylan, if you choose UC, 
because uh, it is your choice. You're going to get a great university with a great education. You're going to have um, a wonderful level of resourcing around you to help you with the challenges that you face. You're going to have great teammates that are going to support you going forward in a team culture that's going to be enjoyable to be around. We're here to build great people. I believe that that part of our program is much more valuable than anything we can offer financially. And I can just flat out tell you that I'm going to care about you the whole time you're here. That's it. Coach, I really appreciate uh, everything you're doing here, and I appreciate being here. It makes me want to do it even more just because of the fact that if my coach is willing to bet on me, then I got to bet on me. I got to bet on myself. Like, I hadn't really heard that from other coaches. And I think that hearing that from someone who is trying to recruit me, like, that's, that's something that really um, inspired me and it made me want to be better. Uh, you guys are going to go. Arizona reversal and one one or two calls in West, whichever one you want. Or you can go rip. Go in. Arizona reversal rip. I think periodically I'll kind of like <clears throat> mentally check in with myself and kind of just be like, hey, like I'll have like an internal dialogue and be like, oh, this is kind of crazy that I've been through all of this. To think that just over a year ago, I was playing my first basketball game after a transplant. And then nine months before that, I had just had a heart transplant. Like thinking about everything that has led up until this moment has kind of been pretty um, insane. Just because like a lot of people don't get the opportunity to even have a heart transplant. And obviously, like I was so blessed for that. But not only have a heart transplant, but be able to return to play basketball at a pretty high level. Like... That in itself is a blessing. So if we don't have what we want on the curl, at least you can curl and attack that. If we don't have it, then you can play to the second swing position to play with the flare. Everybody clear? Okay, here we go. It's a pretty big risk like for, for us as coaches and as a program to say, yeah, we're going to take a kid who's had a heart transplant. <laughs> you know, like, what does that entail? Can he physically do what we're asking him to do even? Is there is going to be issues, especially with COVID and and uh, you know some of the, the drugs that are needed in order to, to keep the heart being accepted by his body. Like, there's so many variables there that you go through. And um, when we talked to the surgeon, he said he's 100%. We talked to our therapy staff, and all we got was great reports back. And you know we did our due diligence to see if it would be possible for him, even if he could be successful to a degree. And then we thought, you know what, this, this kid deserves a, a chance. He, he has the talent, the size, the length. He's smooth. He does all kinds of things. Plus, he brings some great character. Um, we thought his story would be incredibly valuable in our community and, and with our team um, to give the guys a different perspective on life. You know, if we're about culture and about building great people, why wouldn't we give this a shot? So I love the kid. He's a great kid. Going to Lethbridge and meeting the Boulets that was set up through Canadian Blood Services, that it would be a good idea if I like if I had met them and vice versa, just because it was like we're both from two different sides of the same coin. This had changed my life in such a positive manner, but obviously like for them it was completely devastating. Like they had lost their son in a very 
traumatic way. 15 people are dead after a crash involving the Humboldt Broncos. Hearing their story and knowing what it's like being on the other side really opened my eyes a little bit and helped me understand that it's not easy to be part of a donor family at all. Having a conversation with them, like seeing the story from another side would also be pretty eye-opening because I've written the letter to my donor family. But it's also hard to conceptualize or like grasp the whole thing when you're on the other side of it and you're not really able to see how it affects the family. Their bus crash happened on April 6, 2018. My wife and I were following the bus not too far behind, going to watch this final game because we had to go back to teach school in Lethbridge. And we pulled up beside the, we had to pull over and the, we had Logan's billet brother and he goes, I saw a humble Bronco bag in the ditch. And we're like, what? So my wife freaks out. And I said, stay there and I'll go. A lady knocks on our window and says they need blankets. So I grab blankets from the back of our vehicle and I go to the crash site and I'm looking for Logan, literally lifting up blankets, trying to find Logan's face. And then I got kicked off the crash site three times by the RCMP the last time they told me I, we had to go. So we went to Saskatoon, worked our way around, and we ended up in the hospital. Part of this, what I'm talking about is for Dylan to understand the, the uh, donor family side. So my wife turned to them and said, can we donate Logan's organs? And they looked at us like, there's no way that this lady just offered to donate her son's organs. And they looked at Bernie and they just didn't know what to say. And I said, yes, Logan told me that he wanted us so, and he said he's gonna sign his donor card on his birthday, March 2nd. And that created what's called the Logan Boulay effect. And within two weeks across Canada, 150,000 Canadians registered online to be organ donors. That number is now at 300,000. Seeing them in so much pain when they talked about it made me feel um, pretty emotional as well. I always looked at the situation in such a positive manner because it's like, hey, like it changed my life. It makes me feel good. It made my family happy. But seeing the type of um, emotional stress that it put on them it really made me realize like that's something that people have to live with and the pain doesn't necessarily go away, but it just gets, sometimes it just gets a little bit easier with time. Dylan's side of the story is that of a donor recipient who, as you saw, had his life, what he thought taken away, but he's got a life after that. It's here for Dylan, not easy. I mean, first of all, I just, I want to thank you for sharing your story. Like, hearing that was tough. Like, I know that um, that's not an easy decision to make. And I want to thank you for having the courage to be able to share your son Logan's story and share how you felt throughout that situation. And, um, I mean, my side of the story is drastically different. Um, as you guys saw, like, I was just, I was an athlete. I was someone who thought that I was gonna be able to do big things. And then one day it felt like all that was taken away yeah. from me. So before and, um, the heart transplant, I was being recruited by um, the University of Denver. I had an offer from them. Um, I had heavy interest from Harvard, Princeton, Howard, and, where I'm at um, now, like technically is considered a failure because I was trying to go play division one basketball. But at the end of the day, I don't think all failure is a bad thing. I think some things happen for a reason. I think that one of my favorite quotes is a minor setback for a major comeback. Like those flowers there, Logan played hockey there. Their son is White Riondo. And every year the parents come from Saskatchewan and put flowers out each spring and each fall for Logan. That's beautiful. Like, and they, we've never met the people. What Logan Boulay did, like that was, I can't even begin to thank him for everything that he did, even though it didn't um, personally save me because it was four years before it even happened. But I think being an organ donor is an extremely selfless act. And I think that if 
you're willing and you're able, I think any everyone should be an organ donor just because like you can help save so many different people and I think that you can change a lot of lives if you do so. What I've been wanting to ask is like how are you guys feeling about being reached out by the different families that were affected by um, Logan's donations? His heart is probably the part that I would love to hear again. As, because when we were in the hospital with Logan in the ICU, I got to, I would listen to his heart. And, because it, it was beating, it was strong. And even though we don't have Logan, it, it's helpful to know that his heart is helping someone carry on and do things that they love. It's, I guess, the ray of sunshine, the hope. Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing, that sometimes people's organs are not going to go to the person you necessarily want them to be, and you would be a great person for them to know. Our person's heart has made a huge difference. It's, it's allowed you to go on and play basketball. You're being productive. You're trying to make a difference. You're advocating for change and for more organ donation. Like, I would be thrilled if that was where Logan's heart went. Dear donor family, um, I just want you guys to know that I'm okay if you guys don't want to reach back out to me. Like, it's perfectly okay. Like, I understand that some people deal with certain things differently, and I want you guys to know that it's, like, it won't make or break me if we never meet. Like, I, I want you to know that I'm perfectly okay if we never meet and we never speak, because I know that it was very traumatic for you guys to lose somebody. I just gone for a routine checkup and then the doctors had told me that they had found something with one of the testing. And once they did, once they ran a little bit more tests, like they found that there was a little bit of rejection. Hearing that was really frustrating because I had to, that, mean, that meant that I had to be in the hospital again for about two weeks. I had come so far and it felt like the worst of the heart problems were behind me, but I guess it also puts things into perspective that like things may not always go as well as I want. And so I had to deal with that and I had to kind of put a pause on basketball for a little bit. Like I just, I feel like I've been giving a lot to basketball, especially like as of lately, because I've been trying to put in the work even though I'm not entirely sure if I'm gonna be allowed to come back, but I had given so much love to basketball and I'd been pouring so much out of my cup. Like sometimes I just wish that basketball would love me back. And sometimes I, I just wish that like for even, even if it's for like just one season, I just wish that basketball could just pour into my cup for the one season and let me play and just let me be able to prove myself to not only not only to myself, but be able to prove myself to anyone that, that doubted me or just like essentially gave up on my career. Like, I just want to be able to show them that this is what I'm willing to do for basketball. And I want to be able to show that to the world and show them that I haven't given up yet. So why should basketball give up on me? All right, so you go here, touch the line with your foot, that side, touch the line with your foot and blast straight through okay. whenever you're ready on your own time. That's it, right through, right through. Nice. 495, it's under five. I think that's better than last time too. It's good. I've never worked with anyone who's had a heart transplant. We all have to be on board. We all have to be on the same page and there's no, there's no varying from that. I think we really have to make sure everyone's on board with, with what's necessary to make Dylan successful and, and keep him healthy and safe. 
more important than anything is that communication between the medical, the training, the coaching. Like it, it's, it's all a thing. I still think like it could have been a blessing in disguise that they found like that they found it when they found it because if they didn't find it like who knows where I could have been in, like who knows where I could be right now like I could have ended up being in an even worse situation I could have potentially ended up passing away and so I'm while although I'm frustrated I'm also grateful that they were able to find that when they did and they were able to start treating me right away do you ever worry like every time this kid steps on the court like, I hope nothing happens to this kid. Not on my watch, not on the university's watch. Like, is there ever a fear? I'd be mistaken if I said no. You know, like, I think, I think you have that, you care about all your kids. Like, I care about them all. Will I feel responsibility if something happened to any one of them? Absolutely. I think any, any person would who has a, a deep care for, for the players that they're looking after. I love the kid, I'd hate for anything to happen to him, but I'm, you know, I, I, I don't think that I'm in control of that. I, I coach basketball and we're gonna do our best look after them all. And I definitely can't think that, you know, that that's gonna be in the way of, you know, what opportunities this young man's gonna have. I, I think it's great that he's playing. If anyone ever told me that, like, they don't think I should play anymore because it's too dangerous, unless it's a doctor, I'm probably just going to tell them, like, this is what I want to do. And if you have a problem with it, then you can, like, you can go somewhere else. Because at the end of the day, like, even if I'm not playing anymore, like, I can't not be surrounded by basketball. And I think that if anyone tries to take me away from that, then they can just deal like they can just take that energy somewhere else the Raptors had always been a team that I had watched growing up and like having the coach come out to a game and like show love and support me and on my journey to coming back to basketball was pretty um, important to me. If I'm able to talk to the coach, then maybe I'd be able to meet one of my idols and just learning how to continue to deal with adversity and like hearing from someone else's perspective, especially someone who's like reached the highest level of what I'm trying to get to is like, was my main goal. When I when I found out that it was actually happening, like it it doesn't like it didn't even feel real. And honestly, like even right now, like it still doesn't like it's it's almost as if like it doesn't even feel like it's gonna happen until I'm actually there talking to Pascal like in person. Like it's just so surreal that it's it's almost like a dream come true. Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, how you doing? Everything good? Yeah. Man. I kind of decided that I wanted a heart transplant pretty early on just because I knew that if I had a heart transplant, I might be able to start hooping again. Like, that's crazy because, yeah. you know, I couldn't, I can't even imagine going through that and, and, and still be able to play basketball like, and, and still like following my dreams and doing things like that. And, mm -hmm. and, and you know, I just, I just want to make sure I tell you that like, that's incredible, man. Like, you should be, you should be proud of yourself. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Like, no, that actually means so much coming from you. That kind of brings me to one of the questions that I wanted to ask you is, like, mm. you've been through pretty adverse situations right. in yourself. And, like, what's something that really threw you, felt like it threw you off your path? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, how did yeah. you get through that? The hardest thing I ever had to deal with was um, my dad passing away. Mm. And it was, it was tough. It was hard. I didn't, I didn't want to keep going. Like, I wanted to go home. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, I had, it was no point for me to be in college. And, and and because like he was the reason like he was my reason for you know like i wanted to impress my dad like i wanted to do everything yeah. so he can be proud of me and, and and that person is not there and i remember like just you know being in my room and crying every single day um 
just thinking like you know, it, was, it was done. Like I, I just, I just had no purpose. But I know my dad's not here. But I know he's watching me, and 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 he would want me to quit. My focus was different. Like I had a purpose. I had a why for doing everything that I did. Um, and and from that day forward, like like everything changed for me. For me, like my why is also the person who donated me this heart in the first place. Because mm -hmm. like obviously I may not have gotten to know them, right. but it's like I also feel like if I don't try and accomplish things in life, then I'm dis like then I'm letting them down because yeah. they obviously have to pass away in order to give me an, a second chance. And I feel like if I don't use my second chance and yeah, try yeah, to yeah. achieve like everything that I've wanted to achieve, right, I feel yeah. like I'm disappointing them. And yeah. so like now, like whenever I play basketball, it's not just for me, it's not just for my parents, but it's also for my donor. Man, keep going. I, I, I wish you the best, man. Like, I appreciate it. And, and keep making us proud and, and, yeah. and, and keep going. I will. Yes, yeah, there's hard days, but I feel like this is one of those days that kind of makes everything worth it. Like, I feel like today, my cup was filled so much to the point that it's like almost over, like it's almost overflowing. Have him show love and have like, and just be able to talk to him and pick his brain and like share a few laughs. Like it was, today was like, honestly, like the experience of a lifetime. And I'm just so glad that I had the opportunity to meet him. Over the last few months, like I've had a lot of time to think about it and I am, I feel as though that I am content with whatever happens. Obviously, it'll be like devastating to hear that I may not play basketball or it, it could be like potential that I may not play basketball again. But at the same time, I am certain that I'm still on the path that was meant for me. So even if that path doesn't necessarily involve me continuing to play basketball, I still know that I'm still on the right path.